Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask everybody to try to grab a seat, and we're going to make it a brief uh, discussion tonight. We have the room until a quarter till seven, and so, and then we'll be able, so I'll make a brief conversation tonight, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, the history of City Hall here, and, um, and then we'll open up for questions later on. But uh, my name is Scott Churchill. I'm a city councilor here in Milwaukee, and I am an architect as well, uh, and uh, I have the pleasure of talking about the history of City Hall, and I really don't want to consider it a lecture in any way, shape, or form, because I'm not a history professor, but I think many of people here tonight have more history to share with us about this building than I do, actually. But uh, I do want to talk about this being, this is uh, one of the WPA projects, and uh, in 1941, the uh, WPA had spent approximately $11.4 billion, that's $169 billion in today's money, on projects, on, and uh, it was a massive investment. Um, Four billion went to highway and street projects, and only one billion went to public buildings. And this was the last building built for the WPA in the state of Oregon. So we have a distinct history. Um, now, one of the questions was, you know, what style is the, is the architecture on this? And, and Val Ballstrom, who is in the back row there, is, is actually more a, a, a historian on architectural history than I am by far. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm bringing Coles to Newcastle talking a little bit about the history of this building. But um, Val and I talked and, and we agreed that it, it really is uh, more of a modern, late modern uh, contemporary building. You, you could say it has some um, features that might be considered possibly deco, but not really deco. And, and I actually, was, uh, one of the interesting facts about this building was when it was put on the uh, register for historic buildings, um, it was noted as Joseph Anderson being the architect. Now, Joseph Anderson was actually the contractor. And, and this is sort of an interesting problem that architects and contractors have. They're always fighting for who's in charge, you know. <laughs> so I think it's sort of duly... Uh, uh, appropriate that uh, Anderson stepped in and, and had it on the application as the architect when it was actually Walter Kelly. And now Walter Kelly um, also designed, and he was a local architect, and also designed the uh, middle school behind us, which is now the Waldorf School. And so many of his features, he was doing WPA work in the area. So I think, now Val brought up tonight that he, Walter, was also uh, plan and had plans, and, and if you bug Val a little bit, he'll show you on his uh, smartphone some photographs of the um, armory building that Walter Kelly was building and proposed in a design. It was a massive structure in Portland and we're trying to figure out the actual location of that. But for us, Walter Kelly was the architect of this building 75 years ago and it's a simple structure. And I think about uh, Sarah Sizanka, who is a popular architect at the moment and she's uh, author of books called The Not-So-Big House Book. And if you talk about something as not the not-so-big city hall, this would be the not-so-big city hall. It housed the fire department, the police department, the, you know, the mayor's office. It had all of the administration for this city in 1938. And it, it is, it's a very efficient, small, compact. Everyone knew each other. It was a very compact building. Um, but I'm actually going to ask Brad Olson to step forward and, and talk to a little bit I'm actually going to walk around a little bit and, and, and have Brad talk about the history of what he knows about council chambers because council chambers as we see it today is not um, oriented the way it was when he grew up here. So Brad, I'm going to have you chat just a little bit if I don't mind. Huh. Okay, so that kind of put me on the spot. <laughs> so anyway, um, I can remember when I was young coming into this room and it actually faced this way. And so, and and it was very big and wooden structure where the mayor sat right in the middle and then his councilmen sat on each side of him and then there was also when they held courts there was also a place in front where if you were uh, to speak or not to speak but if you were a, a witness or whatever there was a, a place that you would go into and uh, it was raised up so you know um, and then my grandfather who was the mayor and city manager here and his picture was on the wall behind. So if you were to be standing in front of the judge, 
you were looking at my grandfather. <laughs> Brad, thanks so much for that. That's, that's awesome. I think that's a very interesting piece of history that, you know, I, I really am such a new resident of the city of Milwaukee. I've only been here eight years, and, and Councilor Miller's been here 40 years, and many other people have been here a lot longer than that. And um, I, I think uh, one of the things that's interesting is that this was a, a building that was built in, uh, let's go back and look at a couple, you can see the technology of, of what was built. There was no, this is pre-plywood, so the sheathing is diagonal siding underneath that. Um, Frank Himmer is, is nodding and saying, wow, yeah, I, I wouldn't have made as much money on that project. <laughs> uh, no plywood to be sold. Uh, uh, but the construction, you know, it's held up 75 years. It's, it's got a brick veneer facade. And, you know, it, it, you know, seismic retrofit was probably done at some point in the building. We don't know. But if not, I'm sure Frank will sell someone or direct us, to, direct us towards some sources of yes. American-made lumber. American yeah, and, and sources that we can go with that. Um, but there are some great features to the building, and uh, you can see the, the curved arch entryway that's very simple. And, um, and yet the crenellated uh, top of the building over the center of it has uh, you know, a nice architectural uh, sort of deco almost details at the top there. Um, there. I think we have some shots. I don't know if we have exactly. There's, there were some conditions where there were through wall uh, air conditioners, and in, in 1989, as I mentioned earlier in my talk, uh, with other counselors down there, they replaced all that and kept the fenestration clean for the city. Um, one note also, you'll see that the grade of the ent central entrance is, is just one straight path up the middle. The, the historic stone's been moved to the middle. And now there's uh, two walkways, two paths towards uh, the front doors. I assume that's for both parties, both Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> And join the building at the same time, and they meet together, holding hands as they enter through the front door. Um, as you can see, the fire department, uh, and this is, I think, 1950s. Yeah, there's another yes. shot of it, 1950s. Um, it's uh, you know, a small police force uh, and a small fire department, but uh, uh, it serves, serves the city quite well. And you can see the boiler stack in the distance, and then I assume that's an air raid siren in the background on, on the on the very top as well. So, you know, this, this, this building has held up well for 75 years. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's conservative, it's traditional, and it's a great backdrop for things like uh, farmer's market. And uh, it will always uh, serve us as uh, the center of, of uh, history in Milwaukee for sure. So. With that, I'm going to open it up to others that might have other thoughts about history of, of the city of Hall for Milwaukee. Do you have a question? I have questions, but I, I have lots of history, too. I wanted to know if this is police in front and firemen behind, or all firemen in this photo. You know, that's a great question. I, I would have to turn to the historians for that. I suspect it's a mix of both, I think. Police officers. Okay. There's a possibility my father was in that front row. That's fantastic. No, that's that's. Was he police or police? Yeah, you know what I can see. This this is a police oh, officer a here. Yeah. Palmer Marino. Well. Way back what? Back. That that tower you're talking about was to call in the uh, the volunteers. Would, would you mind stating your name for history purposes? Claire Coopenbender. Yes. That tower was uh, to call in the volunteers. Okay, so right when it was volunteer police department or fire department, that, that it, the siren went off and it called in the the volunteers. That's great. Ah, uh, that's that's true. That's that's true. Yeah, it could have been volunteers versus versus yeah. Anyone else have any other thoughts about uh, history they want to add to it, Brad? I have, a, I have a tape. I have a tape at home that I'd forgotten about that. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember who it was that recorded it. It's on a cassette tape, and it was uh, dedicated to my father, and it was Remembrance of Milwaukee. And it talked about the first police officer, and uh, um, um, and it, the first police car, and how he had an arrest one night, and it was underneath the bridge, the 99E bridge. and. Uh, he, he was all by himself, and he couldn't get back out, so they spent the night underneath that bridge. So I should, I should 
get that and give it uh, or have it recorded and give it to the historians because it's very interesting. It was mainly about um, uh, not Clear Lake, but what was the Crystal Lake? Crystal Lake. It was mainly about Crystal Lake and yeah. Bob White recorded it. Yeah. Yeah. So who lived on that property? church back there that I don't know if it's still standing or not. Yeah, it talks all about how the, the train used to come by and they throw food out and feed that. that's how they got the, uh, the uh, stew bum thing. No, I just, I, it's been a long time since I've heard of it, but it's, uh, they had they had a place down there where the hobos used to live yeah. and when the train would come out, when it had extra food, it would throw it out to reduce weight and then they'd make their stews, and their, and that's how they got the name Stew Bums. And uh, he talked of, he, I should get that tape. I know I have it. It's very interesting. It's very long. Yeah. But he talks, he talks about uh, his, uh, his brother was the first one to make the uh, transistor radio, and there was a fight and I think it was like Lou Dempsey fight or something like that Jack Dempsey fight and and Jack Dempsey actually fought at my grandfather's car barn on McLaughlin and the traffic was stopped on 99 from here past Westmoreland and from here to Gladstone and they walked down and they hung around in this area because they hung speakers from the trees so that they could hear the fight outside because they were fighting inside my grandfather's car barn. Yeah. I forgot Jack Dempsey, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Brad, Dempsey. thank you for that. That's that's so awesome so history. Who would I contact for that tape? Well, you know uh, Frank. Yeah. We could have museum. Where where we Yeah, are. yeah. We have some other comments. Hi, I'm Ann Marinos Miller, and my father was an off-duty reserve officer for Milwaukee. His name was Homer Marinos. And when I was little, we played with his whistle, a heavy-duty metal one, and my brother Joel has his badge. And I wanted to bring it today, but the timing didn't work out. So... I'm really excited to be here, and I used to be a little kid downstairs, open that little door with my mom and my brothers and sister, and we'd go down the steps into the library in the basement. It was very exciting. <laughs> and I went to the Milwaukee Grammar School, and in third grade we had a secret door in our room, and sometimes our teacher would let us go in and out of it, and you went down a ladder on the wall and came down into the basement of the school. And there was the swimming pool really was there then. Okay, that was the talk about it. So it's been a pleasure to be here today. I went to, I went to school with your brother, Joel. Okay, he's a lot of grammar. Thank you. I, a few other comments. This is great. Sorry to keep it open mic night here, but this is great. Maybe I can clarify a little bit for you, Brad. The, uh, the Crystal Lake was developed by, by the Witte family, and Bob, and I can't remember his other, there were three boys anyway, and th this thing was, was a huge development, like you say. Uh, they, had, they ran special streetcars out when it was in operation, but in the late 30s, it pretty well fell apart. In the 40s, some... Some guy developed it into a church. He put in a lot of horses so that the people would bring their kids to, to ride the horses and go to church. And uh, he had a special built convertible, Buick convertible. The last I heard, he, was ending, he ended up in the Utah uh, state pen uh, for rape and <laughs> fraud. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, 
way back behind Crystal Lake was the old gravel pits. And the popos back in the late 30s would build the little tin shacks, so they called them shanties, Hooverville. And uh, they were just out of work. They, they needed a place to stay, and that's where they got a lot of their food was off the trains and things like that. Yeah, that's what he talked about. They talked about the dance hall and how everybody yeah, came yeah. from Portland. Well, the dance hall and, and that dance hall was really cool. It was so descriptive yeah, in this. Wow. In this. I, I, they turned it they polished the floor with a bottle of tea and a bale of hay. Huh. Yeah, that's what they drove the car around inside, <laughs> drug the bales of hay around to polish the dance floor. And, and, the, and the city Wait. limits ran down the middle of it. So, so the laws of fire. I remember that. Yeah. I've got to get that tape to get it re-recorded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, yeah, uh, we'll have to make sure we have. Anyone else want to share some more memories? Please. Any other thoughts? You, have, you had high street history of. Place was turned into a tabernacle, and they used to have quite the camp meetings there, and you could hear them from miles around. <laughs> and I, I used yes. Oh yes, I used to babysit with their uh, with Mrs. Brock's grandchildren, and I'd have to sit through those meetings. <laughs> so, do, do you guys have like meetings, historical meetings? You know, like once a month, do you guys meet and? Yes, we do. Yeah, I'd love to know. Oh, you are now. Because of, um, we, we do have a meeting once a month. We've changed it now to every other month. So Sunday, we're having a picnic with the mis museum people, and then after that, on the second Tuesday of each month, at at two thirty at the museum building, which is on 37th and Railroad Avenue. Yeah, I know where it is. You know where it is. Have you been there? Yeah, I have. I, have. I don't remember. I know, I'm just, I'm just trying to think how I'm going to do like 2 -thirds. Well, that is, that is kind of hard. Yeah. If you're interested in coming to see the museum, we're open on Saturday from 1 to 5, and if you can't come then, if you call me, I'm glad to open it up for people that want to come special. No, I, I won't be there on the second Tuesday. Pardon me? So that would be a week. Uh, when's the second Tuesday of this month? Do we have it already? No, no, but it'll be not, not October. The second, October. Second, second Tuesday, Tuesday in October. October at 2.30. 30. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be there. You're at every other month right now, so that would be October. October 8th? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It is November, not October. I'm being okay. corrected. Our September one is coming up Sunday for a picnic instead of a meeting. No, don't do that. No, it's okay, so November. The 12th? Yes. November? November 12th? The second Tuesday. Whatever the Tuesday, November 12th at 2.30. 2.30 is the time. Adele Wilder. My number is 503-654-2292. Thank you all so much for sharing. I'm going to be conscious of our time here on, on architectural history, but uh, this has been a wonderful sharing of, of thoughts of history of City Hall, and uh, I encourage you to participate in other parts. There's First Friday across the street, and of course there's lots of history uh, here on the displays here. So thank you all, and thank you for the historic group that's here sponsoring as well. So, And uh, with that, we'll close our discussion about architectural history of City Council, uh, City Hall for Milwaukee. Thank you. Thank you.